welcome to another amazing day at fmtraining.tv. Hi, my name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. We're here to talk with the wonderful FileMaker platforms. I'm here with the equally wonderful uh, Nick Hunter and uh, Ken Tooley. So, uh, Ken has been a really, really fantastic uh, sport by Letty giving us his file so Nick can re that file live for the audience. Uh, it's been a really cool experience to watch this happen. Let me pull up the schedule. Uh, so we are doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, existing FileMaker file design and modernization workshop, day 30, uh, day 28 through 30. Thursday will be a JavaScript and JSON open Q&A. So um, if you have questions about any of the JavaScript or JSON stuff we have talked about, or even like maybe some stuff you're doing, feel free to bring it. Leland will hopefully be able to answer it. With that being said, I think I'm ready to hand it over. Nick, what are we doing today? Hello, everybody. So today we do the, uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everybody in the audience. I can see the people there. So thank you, Ken, for being uh, with us today. And uh, thank you, everybody. Um, so today we do the, uh, the following of the uh, record file and uh, Ken's file. Uh, from the beginning, it's like a month now, uh, more than a month, right? That we work on this. And um, a month's so, worth of days, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I I want to, uh, you know, refresh the, the memory a, a little bit. You know, what you see here in those videos is what you get if you do the coaching with us. Okay. So if you call RCC and say, okay, I want to do coaching sessions uh, with, uh, with me or with another engineer. Uh, you want to fix something, you want to improve performance, you want to uh, arrange your design and stuff like that. And you saw that it's not necessary to rebuild a file from scratch, okay? The only, the only reason you want to rebuild a file from scratch is if your, uh, if your file is damaged. That's it, okay? If your file is damaged, you need to re rebuild it. Uh, but all the... Of, if not, if it's not damaged, you have no reason to rebuild your file. And most of the time, we can reuse most of what you have in your file and build something new on top of it. Uh, I'm using, uh, in Ken's files, I'm using the same main tables, you know, the balloon table, the pilot table is the same. We just migrate the document to a new table. So it's a new entity, right? So we didn't uh change anything we just add something that wasn't there uh we move around things like this but we don't rebuild things right so we don't we, we don't rebuild the file so we we build on top of what you have and we fix what you have and we remove what we don't need okay so all of this can be done uh with the coaching right so we call us and what you saw during all these webinars is what what happened with you you know we share screen with zoom and we we work together, so and that's something you need to know. Okay, so today we do um, the following of the uh, of the of the Ken's file. But uh, before I have a question, um, I I want to make sure that everybody understood the concept of this cross reference table. So I want to launch a poll in the audience. Please uh, tell me uh, if you want more about the cross-reference table, okay? First, Ken, do you want more about this or you got the, you got the, you got how it works? So do you want me to come uh, and explain more about the concept and all the implication behind this? So do, do you want this? Tell me. I think I understand, I understand the concept. I understand what it does. Um, sometimes I'm not 100% sure how do I then use it um back on my other layouts okay so so uh, a little more please okay so, okay no problem so i'm going to do that so the concept is easy so let's start from the beginning okay so the 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 the, the question is when we want to do this okay when so it's when you have you have one pilot and you have this example is good. So you have one one pilot, right? And you have one balloon. 
and you want this balloon to be uh, related to many pilots, right? And at right. the same time, the pilot can have multiple balloons, right? Yes. So there's no way we can connect one pilot to multiple balloons and each of those balloons to be connected to an multiple pilots, right? So to do so, to do so, right, we need a cross-reference table. So we need a table that do the bridge between the two, right? And for each, uh, for each balloon, each uh, pilot, we will get a record in that table. So let me show you. I'm opening the cross-reference table. Okay, I have here, right? So let's uh, hide some stuff we don't need. So I have the pilot name here, and this is the balloon name. So let's put the balloon name here. Because we have two names. So now we need balloon name. Okay. And we need pilot name. We have pilot picture, pilot name, balloon picture, balloon pilot, balloon name, right? So we have those two. So let's ignore everybody. Okay. I want to connect one balloon with one pilot, right? That's yep. what I want to do. So I'm going here and I'm going to collect the ID of the pilots. So I'm putting this ID in the, I, here I am in the cross-reference table. This is a cross-reference table. I have two fields. I have the, the foreign key of the pilot and the foreign key of the balloon. So I'm connecting this, right, mm -hmm. pilot, right? And I want to connect this with this balloon. This is the ID of the balloon. Boom. So I collected balloon one with Kenneth. Right? He's right. There. So now I want to connect the same balloon with this pilot. Or let's let's take another pilot. Okay. This pilot doesn't have the balloon, right? So this pilot doesn't have the balloon one. So I want to connect the balloon one with this pilot here. And look what happened here. Boom. It's connected. Yep. So I didn't modify the, the pilot table and the balloon table. What I've done, I, I create a record between the two, and the record connects this balloon with these pilots, right? They are connected. So this portal here points to the cross-reference table. This record here is this record. Proof of it? If I change the name of the balloon here, it changed here. Because this information here leaves in this table, in the cross-reference table, I'm, I'm taking the reference, right? I'm taking the reference from that table and from that table, and I'm connecting both together with that record. And that record I'm taking, I'm taking here, I am taking the name of the balloon uh, and the name of the pilot. Why? It's because I want the thing to be fast, right? So uh, we connect. So that you don't have to go back to the original table each time. Exactly. So this this table here, I have many information I need. I collect all the information I need. You know, all what I need from the from both tables, right? So obviously, I need the uh, the name of the balloon and I need the name of the pilots, right? I need both in that table. Right. right. So 
you need to use this when you want to connect one record with multiple records, right? So, and it's like in FMSP, you have the accounts and you have the contacts. The way FMSP is, is built right now, you can connect only a contact can be connected to one account only because there's no cross reference table. That means uh, if uh, FMSP. Uh, so if a contact changes companies, they lose the record, their first association, and get associated with the second one. Sorry? Uh, I was going to say in starting point, uh, if a contact, you can't give them a second company, you have to just no. change their company. Yeah, exactly. So when you have a contact, right? You assign the contact to the company. That's it. And this contact now is connected to the company. But you cannot have this contact in another company. That means if I go to that company, I will see the contact here, right? Right? But yep. if I want to change that contact, no. In, uh, Bevis Serrano, if I want to connect it to an an, another, an additional uh, company, I cannot. I can, I have to disconnect it and connect it to another company. I cannot connect this contact to multiple uh, uh, accounts, right? So, because there's no cross reference table. So, if you want, if I wanted to have this contact to be able to be connected to multiple company, I need a cross reference table mm -hmm. because I have no way to, uh, here, you know, to connect this contact to the account table. There's uh, an ID uh, account here, right? So for the contact, I put an ID of the account. That's it. You were using a trick before yes. putting multiple IDs in that field. But that's not good. It's not good because it's not something you can manage, right? Uh, it's not something you can manage the way it is managed here now. I understand. So you understand? Yep. So the other big advantage of this, right, is that uh, imagine that you want to connect, right? an account and a contact and you say, okay, this contact for that company, it has one role, you know, a job title, mm -hmm. but it has another job title for the other company, right? So in the cross-reference table, you can put the role of that contact for each companies, right? Because you have a record for that. Mm -hmm. So the, the cross of first table is this. When you have one, one balloon, one contact, one pilot, one account, and you want to connect one, let's take this pilot example here. You want to connect one pilot to multiple balloons and the balloon to multiple pilots. Then you create as many records as you want and you put ID of both, right? And then this this table here now, the, the, the pilots point to that table and the balloon point to the table as well, right? Okay. So is that okay, uh, the explanation? Do you want more or is that clear for everyone? Because it's a, con it's a hard concept. I'm not... Uh, you know, I'm aware about that. That's why it's like two, three days I'm I'm on this, right? Because I know that this changed the dimension. Okay, so I'm asking the audience if you if if you're okay with my explanation or if you want more. Uh, I have a, I have a piece of. Oh, go ahead, Margaret. Oh, there's just gonna be a question from um, YouTube. Is the connection yeah. between foreign key to foreign key always in a cross reference table? Yeah, because uh, this. In that table, 
That is the foreign key of the balloon, and that is the foreign key of the pilot, because the parent key of the pilot uh, you know, belongs to the pilot table, and the parent key of the balloon belongs to the balloon table. Each time you call a key that is not in the main table, that is a parent. It's a parent key. Okay? That means uh, each time, you, you know, you have a balloon. And each time you want to, you use the key of the, you know, the key, the, the, the ID of the balloon somewhere else, that will be a foreign key. It's a foreign key for the, for the, for, for the, the table, right? If I create, I don't know, uh, if I have a, a, a document table, for example, right? Like I, I have uh, here uh, in the document table. Okay. This is, okay, I call it from, because it could be, it's a parent key from balloon, pilots, from everything. So it's one parent key. So I, I call that ID, parent key, you know, it's a foreign key. I call that foreign key from from somewhere, you know, uh, idea from, from the place where it should come. Because this, it's um, a, a parent key, it's a foreign key for balloon pilots. Here, for example, I have a foreign key for document type because I have a table where I have my document types. So the parent key of the document type belongs to the, you know, the document type table. But each time I'm using that key in another table, that be, that becomes a foreign key. So the question was, is using both like this? No, it, it could be on any table. Um, here I need two I need two foreign keys to connect two entities. I want to connect the balloon and the pilots. So I'm I'm putting here the I'm putting in this field the the foreign key. I'm putting the the key of the pilot. The, I'm putting the parent key of the pilot here, right? To make, to connect the dots, okay? This goes to the pilot and this goes to the balloon. So when I have, and that's why I have a world here, right? This is a table. This is a cross-reference table. And I'm going to pilot and to the balloon using this. So the foreign key pilot going to the parent key pilot and the foreign key balloon going to the parent key balloon. Right? You know, foreign key, parent key. Foreign key, parent key. Right? So, and that's helped me in that table to, con to collect based on the ID I'm putting here. I'm collecting the pilot name, the balloon name, the balloon picture, the the the, 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 the you know the pilot picture, the balloon picture. So I'm I'm collecting this, okay. Each time I'm putting an ID here, boom! I have a lookup that comes and gather information from the from the entity of the balloon and the and the pilots. So, so when information is changed, does it? change as well like if someone were to change the name of their balloon do i change it in the balloon side and it changes in the reference table do i change no, it in the reference it, and it goes back it won't be changed so we need to make it happen so that is the next step so if everybody uh, is good for for now i can go and go forward okay so if i change the name of the balloon right and mm -hmm. if I, or I change the name of the pilot. This, I want this to be accurate, right? Right. But if I change here, it won't change there. And if I change this, it won't change there neither. Mm -hmm. So I need an action for that. We do that using a PSOS, Perform Script on Server. That's why all, all the table I'm using, you know, all the main entity that I have, like the pilot or the balloon, I have a, I have an on commit script. So here we have one. We can we can use it and we can explore. So I have a on, you know, I have an on 
record commits on their pilots. So let's go to the pilots and I have on record commit pilots, right? Mm -hmm. This on record commits perform a script on server and I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. I say, okay, I let it go. I let it go completely, right? So that means right. do that for me and bye. I don't want let to me get back you. to work. Okay. Yeah. So what does script do? Yeah. So here uh, I'm doing two things. So let's ignore that for now. Okay. But in that case, what do I do? Okay. It scripts collect the pilot ID. Right. I go to that table. Right. And I look for that pilot. So I'm searching for that pilot. I want to go right, and look for all the records for that pilot. Right? For example, here is looking for all of those. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm changing the name. Right? I'm changing the name. Right? Right. Of this guy. So let me deactivate that for now. So I'm changing the name. Oops. Here. And now in this in this table, the name is not matching anymore. Right? I right. remove the can here. So the script do look for that pilot, look for it, search, right? Mm -hmm. Go there and do a relookup. And now, boom, I get the right name. So that's what, so that what the, 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 the script is doing. I know I am on that pilot. The script goes there, look for that pilot, and we look up the idea, the, the this ID, which is the ID I'm, look, I'm using to collect this. So that's what this script is doing, right? So and it would look if, up all of the pilot fields that were connected as a lookup. Yeah. So it will. I'm going to look for all those records. So here I have three records: one, two, three. Right. So you look for those three and change it. Right. So here, right. So if I want to, you know, put again like it was. All done. Oh, but you could change the middle name. You could you could change a number of fields that we're bringing over into the cross reference. Yeah. And so all of those fields would update, not just yeah, all the records. Yeah. Yeah. So all yeah. the yeah for here I don't here I'm changing this. So I I click here, I update this. And you see what happened here. The name will change. But, there it is. Right. So because I I have my script on commits. So I don't really care about. So here you need to be careful on this. OK. So you need to know what you're doing. Because uh, you don't want to do crazy things. First of all, you look for one record. I mean, you look for one pilot. Right. Right. So you don't look for all of them. You don't. You don't say, okay, go go there and we look up. No. You go there. You perform a, rest, uh, a find for that unique pilot. That means your found set will be small, and then you relook up. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the balloon is the same thing. Right. If I change the name of the balloon. Okay, so he's going to go there, look for all the record with that balloon ID, right, mm -hmm. and change it. So I don't know if I have the on commit uh, ready for that. I, I think I was I was building. No, it's there. No, it's there. I thought we so did. It, it, yeah, he it changed it. So he he went there. He looked for those IDs. For this this balloon, 
and we look up for the ID of the balloon to get a new name. So that works, you know, uh, uh, smoothly, right? So you would want to change the data in the balloon or the pilot table and not change it in the cross reference. Let the piece of script change it in the ref in the cross. Yeah, because you cannot you cannot do it. Yeah, uh, you know, you, there's no way we can change something here and automatically get the change without the script. It's not possible. Now I'm just saying don't don't go into the cross reference and change it. You would want to change it on the on the main yeah, yeah. table. Yeah, you, you change on the main table, you change there because this right. is where the change belongs, because this is where the field belongs, right? And then right. after that, I'm going there and I'm doing a re a relookup. Right. But if you went into the portal and changed it in the portal, it's not going to reflect everywhere else. No. If you what you change here, change here. And so only if you change yeah. So if you change the name of the balloon here. So let's go and look for that guy. So if I change here. It changed for one record. Yeah. It changed here. Which is why we had the access to that field in browse mode turned off. Exactly. Because you don't want that to happen. If you want to change the balloon name, right, you need to change the balloon name in the balloon table right. here, right? And then it changed for everybody. It will change this one too, right? Yeah. And if you change here, again, it would change for both. It would change for all the, all those balloon stuff, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So change happens where it should happen. If you want to change the name of the balloon, is there. If you want to change the name of the pilot, is there, right? And then this one collect the information uh afterwards in a relookup that's it you don't do you don't do anything else you just do a relookup right so that's why when you have something similar in multiple places let's say you have multiple cross reference sometime it happened right um mm -hmm. or you want you want the name of the pilot are to be reflected uh, in other tables um, and needs to be updated. So the, the on-commit scripts, you repeat that action in every single table you need to go, right? So you update mm -hmm. this uh, information. So you go to each table, you look for that guy, and then you re each time in each of the table, you do a relookup to update all the information, right? That's why the on commit record, on record commit is the is, is very important because you don't want to enter the game of, okay, I'm changing the name, so I have a trigger here, right? Mm -hmm. You understand? Because the name change, the name change only when I change those three fields. But if I do on commit, it will perform the relookup. It will perform the relookup even if I change something else. Mm -hmm. If I change the phone number here, right? Right. It's going to it's going to do the relookup. Right? Yeah. It's going to do it. You will see it will flicker. See? It yep. did it. So so why you say, okay, why, Nick, you don't put the trigger exactly where it belongs? Because it's a nightmare to manage. It's here it will be easy. But if you have many things that you need to be to that need to be updated, you want to get track on all what you need to update, right? You mm -hmm. don't. You have one place, yeah. right? Right. You have one place. It's like um it's like saving your documents. Right? You are in my you are in where you want to change a document and you say, okay, yeah, I want to change, but I want to save only the later that you know you save the document. It's the same thing. 
So you here you you update the table, right? When you when you change something here, you don't want to manage. You don't because it isn't worth it. This type of optimization, it isn't worth it. It is worth it if here you have thousand records, right? Mm -hmm. But in a cross reference table, I never encounter a a situation where I have thousand record in the in the cross reference table. Cross reference table is very narrow, you know, because it's something you do manually. You connect this guy with this guy, this guy with this guy, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but even though we don't really care about this because it's 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 the optimization is not here that you need to do that. It's not in the fact to put the trigger on each field and stuff like that. No. The optimization is on this table. This table needs to be really straightforward, really, really clean. We look up, we look up, you know, so that's very clean with small things, right? right? You don't never get too many things there. Okay. Most of the time, my my best example on cross reference table, it's the product in an estimate. Obviously, okay. obviously, you want to call that product multiple times, right? Right. So pretty much when you are in an estimate, right, and you want to attach a product to, a, to an item in an estimate, the, the table estimate item is a cross-reference table. You understand? Yeah. It is. You multiple connect. estimates, multiple products, all mixed and matched. Yeah, it works work for projects, right? Yeah. For yeah. example, you have a project and you want to attach. You you have a pro, you have a project and you want to attach staff. Yeah. You need a cross reference table. You have many staff for one project and the same staff you want to be able to connect to another project. Right, you don't want one staff only connected to one project. It could be to another to multi, multiple projects, like uh, you know, or, or a material. You want to use material in a project, so you have a cross reference table to connect that project to many material, and that material you want to be able to connect to multiple projects. Right, so you need a cross reference table in the middle. Of course, each time you do a change in the project that affects the, the cross-reference table, you need to have a PSOS that do the update, that, that, that get updated, all those things. That's why I connect, you know, collect uh, everything in one place, in one on record commit trigger is the best strategy because you central you, everything is centralized there and you send all of those things even though you change something that I have nothing to do with the cross reference table cross reference table you don't care let it go let it go it's it's not a big deal you know it's not a big deal if you have like i said if you have in the cross reference table many 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 records here of course you need to do optimization but that is another story because there's many there's many ways to do uh, optimization here. But it's a, optimization is complicated, right? When you try to optimize your stuff, it, it starts to be extremely complicated because you need to narrow down what you're doing, right? So you need to be razor blade precise when you do optimization. My best strategy is to keep everything small, right? To keep everything light. And then the optimization is no longer required, right? Mm -hmm. That's why okay. I'm saying people, it's better to cut things in pieces, not having, um, uh, for example, uh, I have a great example. Our customer has a file and he has a record and in, in this record he has offers, you know, uh, you know, 
multiple mm -hmm. offers, multiple, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, before he has uh, the previous two years offer, previous year offer, and current year offer. And he has this on, he has two years before the, the, the what's the name? The uh, one field, he has multiple fields like this. So he has multiple fields for two years ago, the same multiple fields for the year, a year before, and the same multiple fields for the current. So he had multiple, uh, you know, the appraised value, the the agreed value, and the market value. He had three fields, three times, because he has the two years before, the year before, and each year he has a script to move data from one field to another. You know, every he's year keeping a, he's keeping a trail, a, a history yeah. trail. Yeah, but that's using tab using fields. So that was heavy. It was very heavy because uh, you had multiple fields. And the no, I said, let's get rid of this. We have a table. And then you can have 10 years history if you want. Right? And through the relationship, call up the years you want to see. Exactly. Or all of the, all the years or the two years before or the year before. But you know what I mean? With the, with mm -hmm. the, current, with the current value on top of the, you know the, you know of, of the of the poll at the so, top of the list yeah yeah so i eliminate like 15 fields from the table because i so because you cut in pieces cut in pieces don't put one table with everything right mm -hmm. it's like when you want multiple when you want multiple uh phones for example right so instead, instead of, having, of adding five phone fields, you make a table that has a phone field and related. Yeah, and you'd say which type it is. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you go to if you go to your phone, if you go to the iPhone, right, and mm -hmm. you go to contacts, you will see you add records. It comes with phone, and then you can add one, add one, add one, add one, add one. It doesn't come with five fields for phones, right. and that's it. You can add. Two two thousand phones number phone numbers if you want in your contact app on the phone right yeah you can add 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 and it tells you oh what it is oh that that the cell phone that the home phone that the work phone you put whatever you want right so mm -hmm. that because you cut in pieces and it's not heavy to manage right so all everything you do. I have, I have a, my strategy is this: if you have a, if you have a table with more than two hundred fields, you have a problem. That's okay. it. So go to go to your file in the audience. Go to your file, and if you have more than two hundred fields, that means something wrong, right? Because it's it's, uh, it's not normal. Something is not good, right? So in the case of the client I was working on, he has like a 1,600 fields on the, you know, one table. That's a lot. That's a lot, right? So, uh, so cut in pieces, right? And uh, it, it's like building cabinets in your in your kitchen, right? Then you can put in each cabinet what it belongs, right, to it. So, uh, do we have any question on this? I see David typing. David's typing. There's a couple questions on YouTube. Yeah. Um, can this be used okay. in three separate tables? Example, customers, contacts, and equipment. One customer can have many contacts and many cameras. Can this be done in one table? No. You need to have a cross reference table. I mean, it's cleaner to have a cross reference table for the equipment and you know and a cross reference table for the um what was the free table contacts and so it would be customers contacts and equipment yeah so so you need a uh you need a cross reference table for each of them so 
you know, because obviously you need a different relationship. You could com- you can merge everything in one, but then you you at the end you will have a big giant cross reference table with everything, and then you will have millions of records, right? For no reason, it's better to slice it, slice slice in pieces, right? Not a big chunk. So it's, I recommend many table, not one. Each table. And you name it correctly, right? Because otherwise, how you will, how are you going to name your table? You know, so it you name your table and you know, like um, contact equipment, contact, you know, so you customer, you know, so you you create your your environment with multiple cross reference table, in in your case too, um, and then you have the the relationship identified and you have the the table identified and then you can have an optimized relookup system with the commits, right? Yes. Okay. The question. Uh, so, Marge, you want to um, you want to spell the David Angel question for the audience? Yes. I had a table of four hundred fields for room verification connected to room table. Should I split into smaller tables? The answer is yes. And I want and I, I want to show you uh, something here. Uh, okay. Here have an asset, for example. Okay, I, I, I tell you, asset management. Okay, so for each asset, it's a type. Okay, so I have multiple types of assets, right? Uh, this is a workstation, for example. So workstation have properties, right? So the operating system and I have a you know, a value list here, and I have an OS version, product name, chassis, a desktop, laptop, you know, megahertz, and, you know. And then here, I have a network, boom. So you see, workstation, I have operating system, blah, blah, blah. And for the server box, I have all the properties. Network, I have all the properties. Uh, so if I have a, a cell phone, for example, I have all the properties, uh, tablets is different, monitor I've done, Linux server is different, uh, hotspots is different, phone system I've known, right? So you imagine if you need a field for each of the property for each assets. In my case here, I have 75 field in assets, right? And I have none for the properties. And here, that's how many, how many field do you think I have here? Operating system, OS products, you know, I have this for the workstation, those, cell phones, firewall, iPad, Linux server. So how many fields do you think I have? Yeah, Renato, you, you're right. I have a little bit more than two, but not much, right? That's. 19 fields, which is IDs and stuff like this. That's what I have. All of those, all of those uh, properties are not fields. They are records, right? So if you have 400, 400 fields, that means you have for your verification is, is you have for, uh, David, can you send me your file? Uh, not now, but you know, one day I want to review if it's possible. Send me your file because I'm interested. Because uh, I could do after Ken's file, which is ending, I can go and do this, show you how this works, because this is magical. Uh, let's say in the property, let's say for the, the Linux server, I want to add a property. So I'm going there, right? So for the Linux server, where's the Linux server? 
Linux server. I want to add a property. So I'm adding one. I want to add uh, the memory, right? So, you know, memory RAM. I want to add this, okay? And I want this to be an edit box, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to assets, okay? So let, let's add a new one. No, I have RAM. Correct? Nice. Yes. Okay, so, but it's even, it's even better than this, right? Because I can say, so I have memory. Or I can read this, right? Go to the value list sets, right? And uh, uh, I can add, I don't, I don't really remember how it works, by the way. <laughs> uh, I can add, this, add yeah, this, yeah, I need this, I add this. And then I said 8 uh, MB, uh, 16 MB, uh, 32 MB, right? And 64 MB. For example, right? So I'm adding this. Going back to this, and I say, okay, the RAM is no longer a number, it's a text. But it's the it's a pop-up menu, right? Okay, so oh, I'm going to my asset here, create a new one, Linux server. Ha! Now, more. Yes, uh, I don't want that to pop up, I want the radio button. Right? It's better. It will look better, right? Right? Interesting how it sorted it. You understand? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, a, I get, it's a text yeah. sort. It's a text sort, yeah. yeah. But still, uh, still. Sure. You know, it's, uh, so, so imagine, uh, so you see the flexibility of a system like this, okay? Uh, it's not that complicated to do, right? So the, 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 the concept, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going for, I'm going uh, off topic, but sorry, Ken, but you know, we start talking about this. No, that's okay. The, the concept is to make, uh, uh, make a field, a record. That means I don't want to create a field for every type of thing I need. I want a record to do this, right? I want a record to do this. For example, um, and, and you can go far, for example, in the same example here of the date, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, purchased, purchased or, uh, uh, install, uh, um, installation. Of course, I want a calendar. Okay. But. I want something to happen automatically, right? And I want that mandatory, right? So now I'm going to mask stuff, create a new one, Linux, boom, right? We are on June fills 12. It in. You would just change it if you were late. Automatically, it came. And yeah. of course, I have the calendar. And if I get rid of this, right? Uh, normally, it should have say it should have been right here, but it's okay. It's a mandatory, yeah, mandatory. See, mm -hmm. I tell you this mandatory, right? I have this telling you because I clicked. The, the the checkbox say okay this is mandatory so uh, you can put whatever you want here right uh, uh, here um, I don't know or um, uh, owner I don't know, I don't know whatever okay owner and then you say get I should have it. So I'm going there now plus Linux. Boom. Okay, you can admin because I'm admin, but you know. So you can do things like this, and you can also go further and say you want to perform a script, right? 
So, but this is something else. So, there you can you can go far in this system, uh, and um, because it's, uh, it's it's what's the name? You can connect and you can do whatever you want because we are outside of this. We are outside of this completely. So we can launch whatever we want on this. We can do whatever we want. So that will be a good webinar, by the way. So uh, David, if you uh, do you think, um, can you send a screenshot of uh, what you do, uh, your 400 field on the layout? Send me a screenshot in Discord, I'm showing it here. I'm, I'm very uh, interested in this. And if he sends you thing... the if he sends you the file, Nick, and you want to take one of my days or one of the days you've been working on mine to go through his and break his out. No, because um, I, if I fine. start this, if I start this, this will be another month. <laughs> if okay. I start this file, I mean, you know, that's why I want to I want to know if I can uh, do his file next to yours. But uh, just for now, if he can send me the, a screenshot right now. So anyway. So uh, let's be, let's let's back to so uh, so Marge, you send the file right so uh, because today I want to I want to finish on time because I have a meeting right after that so um, so the cross reference table small you understand that always you need to narrow you need to know okay here are the rule okay you have tables where you have control and table where you don't have the control. Let me explain. There's table where you know how many records you will have because there's a manual input. For example, here in that case, uh, I don't believe that you can have 1,000 balloons. How, what the maximum balloon you can have, Ken? Per pilot? Um, yeah. I think I've got, I think it's five at this point. Five, okay, so you see. So you, under, so you understand my points. We won't have two million records in, attached to can to the pilots in the balloon table. We won't have two million records because we control it. You have a full control. It's controlled by the user. It's based on the click add. Okay, that the controllable table. And sometimes you have a non-controllable table, like the material table, or you know we have thousand records, or I don't know a contact table. Or you know something like this, so you have no control. Uh, you don't know how you know. There's a possibility to have a lot of records. Here, there's no possibility to have a lot of records. So, right? So you can apply techniques. You know, you can use some techniques here, uh, like updates. You don't care about the to do a, a strong optimization because five records of the server perform through the server you won't even see that happen mm -hmm. it will be so fast that you won't see it happen and it's and and what do i collect i collect nothing you know i collect nothing you know i can collect yeah. for example in the cross reference table i want to connect i want to collect the picture for example the picture right mm -hmm. so i want to collect the pilot picture right so i'm going there and I'm going there, and I'm going there and say, okay, I want to go to the pilots. And we have the picture somewhere. How we call this picture? Um, photo. How how we name this? Maybe it was headshot. Oh, headshot, yeah. So I have the headshot thumbnail, right? Uh, yeah, look up. Right. Uh, look up. Uh, I want to go there. No, I, I was I was going to the calculate. No, I, I, I'm going to look up this, this, and headshot. Okay. Thumbnail. Yeah. So now. And you can do the now, same thing with the balloon. Yeah, but on the balloon, I don't. I didn't build. I I don't. I, don't, I didn't build the the document yet, so I don't have the balloon icon here. So I right. don't have it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but. Uh, but here, if I add this uh, pilot picture here, right, and I'm looking for that pilot, 
I do a change, whatever. So now I will have the, the icon here coming. Boom, it's here. Right? Yep. I have the pilot picture. So, uh, if we don't have any questions, so uh, David, don't don't forget about the file. Send it to support uh, at rcconsulting.com. I <laughs> think you know the you know the you know the the, the address, right? Uh, David, David Angel, and and, and send the credential. You know, uh, put some two free example. You know, sample data to. And uh, so, uh, if, do we have any question, March? Yeah, we've got um, one I would like to really okay. catch. Uh, what impact does this have on reporting? How do you isolate the records, summarize, et cetera? Huh, that is a vast question. We can also talk about tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's for the, okay, for reporting, right? For example, um, uh, just a quick, a quick, a quick answer, right? A quick one. Uh, for the reporting, I want to know, our, you know, for example, the number of balloons, for example, how many balloons this guy has. I know he has three balloons. So you can do the same for the reporting. You bring the information you need from that table. You bring it, right, into that table here. If you, you know, if you want to do report, but that's a vast question. Uh, typically, that's how you do. You you bring uh, all the all the information in one table, right? And you do the report on this. But there's been so many ways to do that. I, I need an example more, you know, uh, more precise. There's no impact whatsoever. And I and I tell you, it will be much more much faster that way than getting all in one. You know, in uh, without this, right? Uh, that that for sure. That for sure. So we done. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Oh, thank you. Very Thanks, much. Nick. Thank you. So see you tomorrow, and tomorrow, yeah, we do the we we continue on this. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much for bye coming. Bye bye. Bye. Biomaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Biomaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.